Hey Subfuries, the world is full of misinformation, lies, fake news, and treachery, and I have noticed that there has been some confusion in the community about How to Train Your Dragon 2 and the ending of Race to the Edge. The final episode, The King of Dragons Part 2, saw Krogan and the gang help him out next summer for just $18.99 a kilo, find a Bewilderbeast and a Bewilderbeast egg beneath Berserker Island. And in my last How to Train Your Dragon video, when I was talking about where Purple Moe Purpleface may have gone and where he might have met a Night Fury, I was kind of surprised to find that people were confused when I said, Oh, I don't think it went north though, because it probably would have gotten caught up in uh, Valka's Bewilderbeast, because Valka's Bewilderbeast tends to draw other dragons to it, to protect it, to lead it. Quite a number in the community protested that that wasn't possible because Valka's Bewilderbeast hadn't been born yet. And it became very clear to me that the community was divided. Was this Valka's Bewilderbeast? Or was the egg Valka's Bewilderbeast? Was chicken Valka's Bewilderbeast? Think about it. Have you ever seen Volker's Bewilderbeast and Chicken in the same room at the same time? I don't think so. How suspicious. So what's the answer, Tim? Great question, you 105 pixel backstabber. And the answer is... Not clear entirely. But this whole story has a number of interesting things that we need to discuss, including a little thing that I'd like to talk about about the mating habits of Bewilderbeast. So let's look at what we know. One theory states that it's the egg that could be Valka's Bewilderbeast, and this would make sense on a number of levels. First and foremost, we see Valka taking the egg at the end of the season. Now, personally, I think the phrasing Atali and the Wing Maidens knew someone who knew someone who had a safe place to keep it just kind of means that they knew Valka, and they might not have wanted to say. After all, we see the Wing Maidens place it on a ledge and Volker retrieves it. Nobody else was involved. But that said, it could be possible that the Wing Maidens knew Fred, the Viking middleman who happens to know Volker. If the Wing Maidens did know Volker though, it makes it a little bit strange that they didn't know what the King of Dragons was, or at least that a dragon like the Bewilderbeast was out there. Yet it's pretty clear in the episode that, much like everybody else, the Wing Maidens have little to no idea. Meaning, of course, if the Bewilderbeast hadn't been born yet, then that would explain why they could still know Volker, but not have any idea what a Bewilderbeast was like. On top of that, the egg clearly has the same colour scheme as Volker's Bewilderbeast, a mix between white, black, and blue. However, one thing that I did find a little bit odd is that at the end of the season, the Wing Maidens never actually met with Volga. They just placed it on a ledge and expected her to pick it up. They never gave it to her personally, and I mean, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they if they knew her personally? One explanation for this somewhat weird interaction is that they knew of her rather than knew her. That would also explain why they use the phrasing they knew someone who knew someone, because they didn't really know her individually, personally. To them, Volka might have just been this mystical dragon lady who goes out and rescues dragons, much like they do, but they hadn't ever actually interacted with her personally. They just knew that she passed over this particular ledge every so often. This too would explain why they hadn't seen the Bewilderbeast, and it is notable that in the second movie, Volka does seem to try and keep this mystical dragon lady look about her. She really reveals who she is when she gets Hick up to the mountain and she only took him there once she realized it was her son. She's trying to keep it secret. Though on a side note, that the Wing Maidens just leave the egg there for hours, days. The thing they just fought an entire war to protect and they were just like, yeah, leave it on this ledge. Should we like stand guard or... No, no, just leave it there. Leave it on the ledge. I really don't think we should. Leave it. On another level, we see that Volker and her Bewilderbeast share a very special connection. A connection that we don't see the Bewilderbeast have with any other individual or dragon. While all those around it bow and see it as superior, in the Battle of Volker's Mountain in the second movie, it's almost as if Volker directs the Bewilderbeast. They seem to see each other as more as equals, and if Volker came to the mountain when the Bewilderbeast was already fully grown, it may have been a lot more difficult to establish a connection like that. If Volker had the dragon since it was an egg, then that sort of relationship is a lot easier to understand. This is in a similar but completely opposite way to how Drago built his relationship with his Bewilderbeast. Definitely not a good one and you can check out my video on what just happened in their relationship before the movie by clicking the link up in the corner of the screen. Now while I understand a lot of people think this is the case, I personally believe that this is Valka's Bewilderbeast. The Bewilderbeast that they found beneath Berserker Island. Hear me out, because I'm gonna jump to the weirdest, but I think most persuasive piece of evidence that there is for this. Valka's outfit. I know, a tiny little detail, easy to miss, but it actually means a lot when you think about it. Have a look at Valka's armor. She modeled it on Guess Which Dragon, the Bewilderbeast. The antennae at the top of her helmet are clearly mimicking the antennae in the crown of the Bewilderbeast. Wildebeast, Bewilderbeast, Wildebeast, 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 Wildebeast. 
It's a sign of her reverence for it. Just as we see that she sort of takes on how dragons move in the second movie because she's been living with them for so long, she's also taking on parts of how they look in her armor. If she hadn't met the wildebeest yet, then she wouldn't have had armor that looked like this. If you weren't so stupid, you wouldn't look like that. They ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. But okay, and secondly, age. In Race to the Edge, especially the final season, Hiccup and the Gang, album out in 2018 for just 19.99 at your nearest, um, the uh, pack and save. They don't know what pack and save is, Tim. They're around 18 to 19 years old, and in the second movie, Hiccup is 20. If the egg was Volker's Wildebeest, that would give it one, maybe two years at most to go from egg to this size. Discovering their secrets. And that to me, I don't know about you, but that's just too little time for me to believe that that is possible. A number of you rightly pointed out that a while ago I made a theory about how certain foods allow large dragons to grow extremely quickly, and the Bewilderbeast may be one such dragon, but even with that theory, one to two years, that's that's still too quick for me. So no, it makes far more sense to me personally that the Bewilderbeast they found under Berserker Island is the one from Valkyrs Mountain. And why is that, Tim? Great question, Melkor fanboy. Well, the first and most obvious reason is that they look identical. They are exactly the same. Let's compare the two. They both have the same color eyes. They both have bumps on the top of their tusks. They have exactly the same spikes framing their eyes. They both have three spikes between their eyes, two longer and one shorter. And the list goes on and on and on. Either they're twins or at least related, which actually, to be perfectly honest, I think is kind of possible given I'm not sure how big the mating pool of Bewilderbeasts is. Or, more likely, they are the same dragon. And this would also fit most of what we hear in the second film, like when Hiccup asks, this is where you've been for 20 years? If the Wildebeest is no more than a few years old, then the mountain can't be either. Yet, Valka clearly indicates that after leaving Hiccup and Stoic, this is where she was taken to. As she later states, Oh, Cloud Jumper never meant to harm me. He must have thought I belonged here. While it's never explicitly stated, it's clearly implied that the mountain was there before she ever arrived, meaning the Bewilderbeast was too. And all of this would fit together with another detail, size. The Bewilderbeast that we meet in the second movie is clearly quite a bit bigger than the one we meet in Race to the Edge. Let's have a look at uh, a size comparison. Looking at this image, the distance between his eyes and his mouth would be about Krogan's height, yet in the second movie, it's about twice Hiccup's height between the eyes and the mouth, or just under that. And this slight difference in size is a lot easier to believe as growth between Race to the Edge and the second movie. I could imagine it growing that much. Of course, this all does offer up some interesting questions, like, what did Volker do with the egg? The best damn omelet you've ever had. Actually, you know I've never had an omelet before. What is the Bewilderbeast's name? I don't know. We should call it something like, um, Jerry. When I was watching all of these clips and reading up on everything I needed to make for this video, I started thinking about something really interesting. Bewilderbeast mating habits. While I'm not sure that we can deduce much from these clips alone, it's my personal opinion that Bewilderbeasts mate asexually, that they can be both the male and female parts of the canoodling extravaganza. At least, that's what we'll call it for this video. In other words, they don't need a partner to have children. Or at least, given how few wildebeest it's indicated there are left in the world, or that they don't seem to interact with one another much, or the difficulties that mating rituals would surely create, it wouldn't be surprising to me if this was the case. On top of that, only one wildebeest is seen around to protect the egg, yet in most animal cultures it's the females that protect the young, yet this is the king of dragons. If they reproduce asexually, then they would be the only ones left to care for the young and for their eggs. Now we know from the feeding scene in the second movie that the Bewilderbeast is free to leave whenever it so chooses, and I think it's likely that for the time that they get pregnant and are caring or awaiting the egg to hatch, they might leave, find a hidden quiet place for all the giant mammoth dragon could possibly hide, and protect it until it hatches. Now, as an alpha species, they're naturally prone to competition, perhaps even with one another, even within their families, so it may not be surprising that they want to give it its own territory, its own place and its own lot of dragons for it to care for once it hatches, and after that it heads back to its mountain. Though that part is all conjecture and kind of largely my personal theory. The real question is, 
What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. And also, question of the day, if you could bring back one extinct animal, which animal would that be? Let me know down in the comments below. A massive thank you to those who go and support me on Patreon. Your support means the absolute world to me. Uh, I honestly can't thank you enough. And if you do want to support me and our supreme leader, Mishka, then that is one way to do so. In the meantime, I'd love for you to come follow me on Twitter or Facebook or email myself for your main address and links in the description below. Stay nerdy, sub furies, and I will see you in the future.